Hi, hello, and welcome to Capricorn Venus Tarot. This is Capricorn Venus. So today we've got a special video. I'm doing a collaboration with the Scorpion uh, Tarot. And she reached out to me and I was so excited. And today's actually the Scorpio moon. It won't be when you're seeing this, but um, when I'm filming it is, I always have a soft spot for Scorpios. So very excited to collaborate with her. Make sure to um, check her channel out. Uh, she always has the best thumbnails. So yeah, I'll link her video down in the description. But today, our topic is what makes you appealing? What about you is speaking to others? Um, and then her topic is going to be what makes you attractive. So yeah, I will link that down below. Thank you very much. And make sure to show her some love and me too. Um, but yeah, we've got four piles here. Uh, and there are some lighters here. So we got the red lighter for pile number one. The orange lighter for pile number two, the black lighter for pile number three, and the purple lighter for pile number four. So go ahead and pick your pile and I will see you guys in there. Okay, I'm getting into it. And just a side note, if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing, I'm growing the channel. We're almost to 10K. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it and all your Cash App donations. And um, yeah, I just really appreciate this community that I have got with you guys. Also, you other tarot readers watching. Um, I think it's so fun that we all get to connect at the same time and we're all out here putting out our work like a communal artist group out here. So um, appreciate it very much. We're gonna get right into it now. Okay, pile number one. What makes pile number one appealing? Definitely your positive attitude, your optimistic outlook. But more than that, you, you like to dream big I'm also seeing that you have kind of like a sassy, fun attitude while being optimistic. So that's a good combination. Let's go ahead and pull some cards. What makes pile number one appealing? Also, you're like really fun to hang out with. You know how to make just like a coffee date a really exciting, um, funny memory. Like brunch with you is just a blast. And I feel like it's something people remember for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something about the way you are, it's like a stability in your energy that I feel like is very appealing to people and it calls out to people and it makes them feel like, this is a person I like, this is a person I want to be near. So it's, it's just drawing them towards you, okay? So what is appealing about pile number one? You really soothe people's anxieties. And I think it's because you're dreaming big. You're optimistic. You always have to know how to put a little bow on a bad situation, you know, kind of um, the silver lining aspect of things. And also your energy itself is very warm, red. I feel like you are that kind of person that I have to be present with or you you force a presence somehow um maybe it's because people step into your routine because we did get the four of wands so maybe you always go on a hike on thursdays and so people can come join you and so that makes that just takes the pressure off their mind it's really i'm getting this sense of you are a person who relieves pressure yeah there's something about you that relieves pressure Maybe you take up a lot of space too. Like you're that kind of person that um, you rise to the top. You're the star of the room. You um, take up the mantle of making all the funny jokes. You don't mind getting on stage first for karaoke. Um, or you don't mind being the only one to get on stage for karaoke. That's another thing with you. It's like you don't care if it's not even about leading people into things. It's more that you have a way about you that is loud, that is um, yeah, full of energy. And so this allows people to kind of ride your wave in a way, in a positive way. They can use you as motivation. They use you to push themselves forward. They get that, it's, I'm really getting that ocean swell, which 
helps you go back onto shore or yeah you really take people from this like negative space where they're kind of like floundering maybe drowning a little bit um or kind of aimlessness you really direct people's aimlessness and again it's i think it's your energy and the kind of things you decide to talk about and your whole outlook um yeah also you might have a very distinct like perfume that you like to wear or cologne you like to wear and as soon as people smell that it's like oh i'm home i'm i'm comfortable um maybe it's hormones too or like pheromones or something because there is a sense of just like being around you is like a smoke break you you have the energy of a smoke break that's something that's like really appealing about you is the smoke break is always going to be there <laughs> when you need to step outside there's th yeah there's something about that energy with you in that same way too i feel like you're always open for a combo you know like just like you meet friends on a smoke break, I'm not a cigarette smoker, but I've had a couple friends that are. And the best thing about being a cigarette smoker, um, which I don't recommend, definitely wean yourself off. Um, you know, I smoke weed. I think like, just try try other things, but um, cigarettes can be a helpful thing for people who have been addicted to harder substances, then they can go to a lesser substance. So I'm understanding of all that. Um, but anyway, the best part about being a cigarette smoker is that you meet a lot of people and you always have the lighter ready and you end up getting in a lot of different kind of conversations. And I think you have that energy pot one of somebody who's, it's like you, you have that special quality of they met you just when they needed to, or yeah, you had the lighter, which in this case is like your light, you know, that you're bringing to people at random occasions. Okay. Yeah. Wheel of Fortune. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. It just seems like you because you're so energetically open and optimistic and you believe in like the goodness of people and happy luck, basically, you end up being at lucky places at lucky times. And because you're so open to conversation, um, God in the universe can use you to say exactly what somebody needed or to, and you don't even have to be doing this on purpose at all. Um, that's something I find that it's good to take advice you know, based on what you're actually hearing and not who it's coming from. Because sometimes people can use um, people you don't like as vessels. You know, maybe they say something that actually hits you and you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> a broken clock's right twice a day. But I feel like with you, you have that quality of always just saying the thing that someone needs to hear. And because you're always giving your cup out to people and you have this openness, again, like the smoke break, you're ready to talk. You have this idea that, you know, you're very friendly. You have like a politeness and maybe you think you're not as charming, but you're wrong about that. You have a charm to you. It's like, it's not all, charm is not just what you see in the movies. There's lots of different kinds of charm. And I feel like you have a very distinct sense. And again, there's a red quality to you. Yes, the lighter, but I'm also just like feeling that and seeing it. Um, it's more moody. It's more relaxed. Again, the, the smoke break thing is, is really heavily coming up. Um, and maybe you wear darker colors or you wear black nails or something like that. But anyway, so I feel like because you're so open and it's no pressure, people unclench for a second and this allows new ideas to rush into their life. This allows space for something to start over um, because you have this sense of everything stops with when they're around you. But it's not about everything stops. It's more like even just that mental decompression for a second really goes a long way. And this is a good lesson for all of us is that um, if, if something is stressing you out or you feel like totally on fire, basically, where like nothing is working out, try just not thinking about anything. Um, and that mental decompressing, the mental pressure release often that our, our brains really want to help us. So when we give them that little space, sometimes everything just works out. And I feel like that's what makes you appealing, Pa One, is that you have that quality of just that slight release that someone needed to get to the next step, to, to raise themselves to the next level, to, to go on that journey, to make those conclusions in their own mind, okay? And you're so easygoing and you're not one to take credit for other people's successes. So like you might help a lot of people and give people advice, but then you don't really take credit for that. You don't really uh, like, oh, I made them blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you don't do that kind of stuff. Um, like, like I said, no pressure, no pressure. 
Ten of Wands. Just like relieving people's pressure somehow. Interesting. What? What's with that? What's the relieving people's pressure? I think because I got Eight of Wands over here, and I think that the thing with you is you're moving so fast, and you're you're just jumping from subject to subject, or you're just thinking about what you're doing right then, and so people kind of inhabit that energy. And it appeals to them. Also, your energy in general just appeals to people because it's kind of, it shows them a different way of being. It's compelling. I feel like you have a compelling part of you where people want to listen to you. They want to follow your advice. They want to do what you're doing, even if they're not um, typically doing that. Like I said, I've had friends that are smokers and I'm not a smoker, but I would go in and hang out with them while they had their smoke break. So again, it's like compelling me to go outside when I normally wouldn't or compelling me to be in their energy and listen to them and, you know, be there for their break, thereby making me take a break. Do you see what I mean? So people are following your lead and this is what is making, this is what is appealing about you. Okay. Oh my gosh. And it wants again. <laughs> People might be, okay, so here's what's appealing about you. You could be sad one second and then completely fine the next second. You really move out of a sad or a stagnant place quickly. You're, you're all about like moving out quickly. And, and you might be like a slow, <laughs> slow mover or a relaxed person, but in terms of your emotional state, you're quick. You're quick to turn the page. You're quick to turn to an optimistic side of things. You're quick to, you know, you have that bluebird in your heart sense of even when it's really bad, it's never really that bad because it's you. Okay, what else? King of Pentacles and Six of Cups. You bring a lot of sweetness and Two of Cups energy to people. So what that means is like, I, I feel like you really connect well with almost anyone, but it comes across natural. You don't come across as a politician so to speak, like where you're just entertaining the masses or something, you come across as a close friend that they're catching up with over years. So even if you are just meeting someone for the first time, it has this casual air to it um, that really is appealing to people. Yeah, you have this, this vibe of you guys both check into the inn late at night and you, Pa One, were already reading by the fireplace and this person goes over to the fireplace and you guys start up a conversation and they come to conclusions they never would have thought of. And you were the impetus of that. You are appealing because you are already in your path. You're already in your story. And so people jump on and you're very open with them. And it's no pressure, but you teach them a lot. They also feel very connected to you. I feel like another thing that's appealing about you is you, you have a relatability. Um, yeah, there's definitely like a... I don't know, down to earth is kind of played out as a term. I just mean like, you seem real. You're just real, pal one. You're so real. <laughs> like, wow, that's so real. That's so me. You know, it's like, again, if they saw you um, reading by the fireplace at that hotel or something, they were like, oh, that is, that does sound good. That does sound nice. I like that. So people see you out in public or they see you in your life and the way you live, people see it and they're like, yes, I like that. That's so real. Like, I want to do that. I I should do that. I should invest more. I'm also seeing like, um, maybe you wear really cute earmuffs or like the way you dress in the wintertime I'm seeing is like people really like that. Um, it's very appealing how you add a little extra flair to your outfits or you really, you care about comfort. There's something about that, okay? Ace of Swords, Ten of Wands, you really speak truth to power. <laughs> like you are that kind of person that is like, okay, we'll just do it. You know, like you are a clear cut kind of person too. I think this goes with the no pressure, um, also the relaxed nature of you. You're just like, okay, well, okay, if that's your problem, then here's the solution. And they're like, no, it's more complicated than that. And you're like, no, it's really not complicated. It's it's not that complicated. Yeah, I feel like that's another appealing part of you. Um, pile number one is that it's not that complicated for you. You know how to see things in a very simple way. If it makes you mad, it makes you mad. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. Um, if I feel behind my work, then you just need to do your work. If I feel like I don't really like the way I look, then change it, do something different. Um, you know, if I really want the ice cream, okay, you know, get it. 
And then you can change other things. There's a directness about your nature. Also with the communication style again. I feel like, again, with this like comfortability, you have that kind of comfortability who wouldn't get starstruck by meeting a celebrity. You would just treat them as a person. Maybe you'd leave them alone, right? With all this travel run stuff. But yeah, I think like you have a comfortability with everybody and you understand where people are coming from and like treat them all as human and you're not like putting people in categories as less, better. Um, you know, you talk to everyone in the same kind of way. You're very even handed. Um, interesting. I don't know if anybody here works for like a labor union or a union, but you have that union kind of vibe about you where we're all in this together. You know, like, yeah, I feel like another thing that's really appealing about you is you're like, we're all in this together. Um, yeah, you're really a humanitarian as well. And people know this just by your approach in life. It's not like necessarily that you're super political or saying everything. If you are, you are. But I'm saying what's appealing about you is just the idea that you are a humanitarian in the way you live and the way you treat people. It's it's action-based, not just words. Okay, so what's what else here? Also that you live very large in a way. Large in a way that's personal to you. So like you take your personality to the max with the way you dress, how your car looks, how you decorate your home, like, um, you know, maybe your social media presence, maybe, yeah, I'm getting like, maybe you have a blog or something like that. Um, but you live in a kind of like Pinterest to real life kind of way that people really relate to. And again, this is appealing to them. They relate to the fact that even if they don't like your particular style or if that's not their particular style, they love that you, you know, play it up and you go full into it. You're very invested in your own plot, in your own life, in your own story, and yet you still have a door open to people. Okay, what else we got here for um, pile number one? What makes pile number one appealing? And we got 11, 6 is Virgo, 11 is Aquarius, and 9 is Sagittarius. Yeah, this really does feel like you. Um, hmm. So Aquarius, Virgo, Sagittarius, you're always learning. Again, you have this open door policy that is very appealing because it's not an open door to hurt you, but it is an open door to conversation. It is an open door to a fun little time. It is an open door to some company. It's like you just want some company. Um, mm -hmm. just reminding me of that music video company by Tanache and she's an Aquarius. So yeah, again, Aquarius, um, in 11th house is like humanitarianism, um, understanding the collective, um, and then Virgo is like service oriented. I just feel like you also, you'd be the type to bring someone tea. And again, this, this goes back to the, it's not complicated. Humans want so many things, you know, a hot cup of coffee, and, um, you know, a warm blanket next to a fireplace. Like, we don't really need much. And that's the reality. Um, and you have that kind of approach that's very appealing to people. It's like you remind people that they're just human meat suits or whatever. <laughs> um, I just saw this girl say that and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. Because I think about it like that, but then it's, it's different hearing somebody say it in a unique way. And I feel like that's another thing that makes you appealing is like the way you say things makes things click in people's minds. They're like, yes, that's so real. That's exactly what I've been feeling, but I couldn't put words to it. Because of your casual nature, it also invades people's minds really easily. Because you're so casual, and, and again, no pressure, no hierarchy, this makes people very into you and able to listen to you. And you get through to people in a very simple way. And you don't have to be so sweet all the time. That's something else that's appealing to you is you, you're not always sickly sweet. You're not always this politician. Um, you have a tiger vibe to you. Again, this like moody darkness um, and almost like scary sometimes. And yet you're still keeping the door open and you seem friendly. So it gives people a new groundwork of what you know, this is a new type of person. I feel like that's another part that's appealing about you, Pal One, is you're kind of a new type of person to people. And it expands their world. It expands their mind. Okay. Anything else? What is appealing about Pal Number One? You bring people's funny side out. So even when they're having the worst time, they may be bawling their eyes out. You just say something and they start cracking up. You know, like you definitely have that energy of 
bringing the humor into any situation. You'd be the type to make a dark joke at a funeral that was tasteful, <laughs> but funny enough to get people laughing in a hard moment. Um, so yeah, you do have that like shot of whiskey kind of vibe. It's like, you know, if your girlfriend wants to sit around and bitch, you're like, okay, but let's get some weed here. Let's get some, let's, ha let's take a shot. Let's, um, go sit in the park on our blankets and then we can talk about this hard subject. So again, bringing that practical helpfulness into, into maybe what somebody would consider a complex or dark situation. Like, you know how to romanticize things to the point where you're kind of solving it. It's like you take your friend out to lay on the blanket and discuss their problems, but then they end up wanting to talk about something else because you took them out of that moment. This is a good thing. Um, I think a lot of our lives can be improved by changing the percentages of what we're thinking about day to day. And you do that really well, pal one, and it's very appealing about you is that 75% of the day, you're gonna be doing your chores, listening to music, wearing a cute outfit, having your little coffee, and, and the other 25%, you deal with those complicated things like interpersonal relationships, but the backdrop keeps you calm. And so people learn about, people learn that way of being from you because you use that to solve your own problems. You've used that to get to like a six of wands. Like you seem like a winner who likes their life and has built it from scratch. And so this is very appealing about you because people feel inspired by you. I think that's a big thing, but it's like calmer. It's not, again, this hierarchy. They, they feel like you're so real. You're just like me. So I can do this too. These are simple ways I can improve my life. Um, mm -hmm. The sun, again, you you bring sun and fireplace energy, also jungle cat energy <laughs> to every environment. So yeah. Hmm. Even when people are not very trusting, they can trust you. So somebody, again, the, the, the stranger situation, but I think, you know, coworkers, clients, lots of situations where maybe it's an uncomfortable place. Again, a funeral, a parent-teacher conference, um, you know, a job where the boss is mean. These are all uncomfortable scenarios which lead people to be distrustful of their environment. But there's something about you that puts people at ease. It really, really puts people at ease and it brings happiness into a place where happiness shouldn't be, you know, necessarily. And, but in a way that's, again, tasteful. Six of Cups. You never take it too far. You bring everybody back to their inner child because you are so connected with your inner child and you're comfortable and you're not embarrassed. There's not a lot of shame in this pile. And I feel like that's something that's very appealing about you as well. You don't have a lot of shame. Like you seem like the type to, again, that's, I think that's what the jungle cat thing is. You are just alive and, and walking and it's beautiful and people are inspired by it. They're inspired by your grace. They're inspired by what you decide to do. You know, imagine seeing something so powerful and dangerous like a lion and they're sunning themselves on the rock. You know, that is the kind of vibe I get from you. Or I'm thinking of like Bagheera lounging on the tree. So it's like this idea of bringing us all back to our personhood, our bodies, and that we can be this magical creature and this physical creature and we have to treat both of those sides of ourselves we need to treat the physical part we got a sun on the rock we got a lounge on the tree you know <laughs> um and then we can go and hunt later but we we can't go out into the world and do these actions that we know we have to do without taking care of our body and a, a junk crack knows that and just lives it and you live by example and i feel like that's what's appealing about you pal one you're, you're you live by example but in like a very casual, warming, natural ugh, kind of way. Like, oh, you, you have like a sexual potency as well. That's very appealing. Um, yeah, the fact that you're able to instantly connect on a human level with pretty much anyone, it's extremely appealing. One of the number one things appealing about you. So. I think that is all I've got for you, pal one. Let's pull some music videos to end off. And then make sure you go over to the Scorpion Tarot. I'm going to leave um, her channel down below. She's going to do a video about 
all about how you're attractive. So let's pull some music videos. You're so real. <laughs> you're so real. like this for you because you do have this like sexy nature and again living through it's like people live vicariously through you which allows them to see things more simply and then accomplish them okay okay yeah oh this is that's a cute song too i can break my heart myself it's perfect for you and we're gonna do blowing smoke, state of the union. There's that politics thing again. <laughs> Crazy. I, I hope this is back up. I hated that. Um, geez. And I did mention Chapel Roan. There was some sort of, um, you know, thing that happened with the music videos where a bunch of music videos have been like taken off of American YouTube because they let some sort of contract slip. So I hope that gets sorted out soon, but I'm still gonna be just continually finding the link, even though the video won't pop up if you're in America, so that maybe in the future, this video will, you know, that will sort itself out. So I feel like that's something else about you is appealing, is like things just sort themselves out over time. You let you let things smooth out over time. You You, you maintain this comfortable presence um, in a very emotionally stable way. It's like people don't have to worry that you thought poorly of them in that random interaction, that random stranger interaction, or that random interaction with a coworker. You, they don't have to worry about you because they know how you are. You're a jungle cat. So you're, you're off, you've forgotten it. Or it's not even about like forgetting it as if they're not important, but it's, it's forgetting it as if, because you're really living moment to moment. Okay, um, blowing smoke. I feel like your coworkers love you, by the way. Um, you're very appealing to the people who work with you or are on your same level because, again, this communal vibe, we're all in this together, unionizing. <laughs> Unionize your workplace, you know, be brave. But you have that energy, okay? You're very brave. And she does have that kind of jungle cat aesthetic in that music video love the fashion of that music video but then here with tattoos it's like you're also in touch with that side of you that is soft and sweet and weak and like wants soothing and is afraid of being heard and again you're so real pal one you're so real you're so real which i can't waste my time thinking about what you say is crazy i know myself and i know what's real you know and caring about things isn't crazy being intense and loving hard that's not crazy and if you think it is i don't really have the time to think about it i think it's karma yeah and again you have that kind of like maybe you would take revenge or you would be mad about something but it's like it's in the moment it's because of something it's not yeah i don't know something about you being like down to earth and and coming from an understandable place um and just knowing about things, having a really good intuition about things that makes concepts click for the people around you. Again, you, you definitely are a role model of people while also not making them feel beneath you. So yeah, I'm gonna leave these down below. Thank you very much, Paul One. Make sure to go um, leave Scorpion Tarot a comment for me. Um, <laughs> tell my I sent you over. And uh, thank you if you are coming over from her channel. And I will see you guys later. Pile number two. Pile number two. I feel like something that's appealing about you, pile number two. First of all, hi. <laughs> Second of all, um, I feel like something that is appealing about you, pile number two, is just that you are so unpredictable. Like, you change like the clouds do during the day. You know, like, you have to... If you look away for one second, pile two's gone. Or you look away for one second, pile two's completely changed their mind about something. Okay? I feel like you have almost like a hipster quality to you, pile two, where you like to do what no one else is doing, you know? And you, maybe you'll do something just because no one else is doing it. Um, you know, and it's very appealing because, again, you're very exciting. Like, maybe you always get a different ice cream, fla ice cream flavor. Or this could be something, oh, I think for several of you, your baristas, like when you're getting your coffee every day, um, 
or your coworkers or people around you, they notice how you get your coffee differently every day or you never get the same thing or, and apply this to lots of situations because I feel like there's people who see you who notice that you always eat something different or you drink something different or you change your glasses every day or you change your nail color. Every, there's something about like every day is something different with something you're doing. Hmm. You change up your routine constantly. I don't know. Okay. Um, what is so appealing about pile number two? Six is Virgo. And again, it's like that daily thing, the daily routine. Okay. One is Aries. It's also the self. I feel like your self-concept is very appealing. So like maybe someone might think whatever they're thinking of you, but then the hearing it from you changes their whole worldview of you. Hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> and I pulled change. You're, you love to change. About to. Like you're, you're always changing constant transform. So we got change and transform. Okay. We're going to keep transform out because rise above any situation and become the best version of you. Yeah. This is something very appealing about you pop too, is that you always are trying to one up yourself. And maybe that's why people are seeing you change every single day or always get a different drink at the bar or whatever it is. Um, you're always trying something new to see what fits, to see what's best, to perfect yourself, to go towards, you know, um, Virgo has that like perfectionist nature and ability to, you know, really hone on, hone in on details. You would want a Virgo um, or Virgo placements to, you know, critique your work. You would want a Virgo placements to edit your paper. Like that's, that's the kind of person that you seem to be. Um, but it's, it's what's appealing about you is you have a critical eye and that Virgo tendencies thing of, I like this, I don't like this. I tried this, I didn't like it, let me try this. I tried this, I liked it, but let me go even further. Okay? And 11 is Aquarius. 6, 1, 1, 1. 11, 11 here. You're always on a fresh start, you're always on a kick. I feel like you could be that kind of person that, oh, this week I'm trying, I'm taking a pottery class. It's like, you've never talked about pottery before, um, you know, or this week I'm learning how to plant roses. And then for the rest of the time that person knows you, you know how to plant roses. So you, you constantly build on your skills. You constantly are um, adding tools to your tool belt, so to speak. Um, and that's because you, you take that critical eye to yourself and the people in your life. I feel like the people in your life, I, I think another thing that's a, appealing about you pal too is simply by being in your life they're gonna improve because you're gonna clock it every single time like <laughs> like yeah okay so people who are extra extra sensitive I don't know if they're gonna really um get your style pal too <laughs> like I don't I don't know I think you have to be a little mentally strong um to be like this so you also have that mental strength that people find very appealing. You are very mentally strong. You can take criticism. You can survive in the coolest of, um, in the, um, what is that? Coolest of conditions. Um, your ambition is also very high and you don't seem to have much doubt about that. Even though you're very critical in a way, it's not negative or self-doubt or self criticism in the way other people are used to seeing it. Um, I think that something that's appealing about you is you make criticism powerful and positive. Your powerful, positive criticism. Powerful, positive critiques. I could definitely see you being a very helpful person in a classroom um, or on a team, um, especially like a sports team or something, because you would know your own weaknesses and be working on them. But then you would also spot your teammates' weaknesses and tell them how to play. I'm really imagining you. Okay, so somebody on this pile must play soccer or something, or used to play soccer, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing someone run down the field and smiling to one of their friends, being like, "Okay, now you go a little further out, and you over here go this way, and then you guys all accomplish the play perfectly." The play being the, um, that's like what they call the routine for the soccer, like where you stand and everything. So it's like there's something about you that coordinates teams extremely well. Okay. 
Okay. You transform the people in your life though. That's that's a big thing that I'm seeing is like you, your presence is very transformative. It's just a part of your personality. You might have encountered backlash for this trait that you're constantly clocking everybody's weaknesses, but you do it to yourself. So people need to stop complaining. They need to get out of your face. And also people find this very, very appealing about you that, you know, a lot of people want to change. They want to grow. I mean, maybe we don't meet millions of those people every day, but even people who put up a, a offense about you, they end up growing too around you, pal, too. So this is very appealing about you. It draws people to you that you have that keen eye. You have a definite sharpness in your eyes. Like people can see that the lights are on and somebody's home up there, like constantly. You're never like, okay, so this is what's appealing about you is you, you never seem zoned out. You always seem eye on the pulse, like really locked in. You have a metallic aura in a way, okay? Scared you, moving on. People feel, okay, this is kind of funny because um, of course you can pick multiple piles and this could also be like how you're appealing in different sectors of your personality, but I think it's funny because it's kind of the opposite of what I was saying with pile one, but I think you have a pressure. I'm pressurelicious. Like, listen to that song by Megan Thee Stallion, Pressurelicious, because that's the kind of vibe I'm getting here. Um, or uh, Pressure by uh, Rico Nasty. Like, your girlfriend, she's pressing me. <laughs> like, everybody is pressed to see you, pressed to impress you. Like, people feel that pressure to achieve. They feel a obligation to you in a way, an obligation to show you that they were listening or an obligation to show you up even, or an obligation to, again, impress you, um, to make those changes. If someone sees it, if Pals 2 sees what's wrong with me, other people could, and that's true. Um, but also I feel like, yeah, you're a pruner. You really cultivate the people in your life. So make sure you're picking the right ones, Pal 2. Make sure you pick the right people to be in your life because they will benefit from it. Um, so just remember that you are a critical member of any team, any family, any friend group, um, a relationship. I mean, you would have that glow up. They do say there's that thing about um, uh, like black girlfriend effect. You have that. So it's like the black girlfriend effect, I guess, is like when a guy dates a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got a cooler haircut, better style. He looks much more handsome. So you have that effect on everyone you meet and everyone you're close to. Um, and so just understand your value with that. It's making you very appealing, whether or not people say it, because sometimes I feel like this kind of personality can get a little slack or have a little... Um, pushback, but you need to understand your value. Imagine you're a consultant of the world, you know, pal too. And also you do really excellent as a consultant, but just in your life, you serve as a consultant to everyone. So make sure also you use that for yourself and don't waste your time too much on other people um, because it's happening naturally. Because again, your aura is pressure. So they're going to change, you know. <laughs> And they see that sharpness in your eyes. So people can read more out of that than you think. Sometimes you don't have to say much. I don't have to say too much. And they know they need to step up their game. They know they need to impress you. They know that you like them. Or they know that they have a chance. Or, you know, it's like you don't really have to say much. I'm so jealous. Yeah, and this, this again, it's that spark. That spark that gets people going. And I feel like this is what's really appealing about you. You have that spark. You have the pressure. That's a big thing I'm seeing. It's like you're always changing and proving. And so this puts the pressure on the people in your life, the people related to you. Your cousins want to do better because you're doing good. Um, you know, you're serving as a real inspiration to your siblings. You're serving as an inspiration to your coworkers, to the student body you grew up with. You know, like, um, mm -hmm. I admire how hard you work. There you go. You are always putting in effort, you know? You are a very hard worker, Pal 2. And maybe to you, you know, you have like a love of the game also. Um, there's something about you that's very appealing, Pal 2, that's like a love of the game. Like, I love to work hard. I love to get up. Again, this is giving sports team. This is giving soccer. Um, 
like someone who just loves to get up at four in the morning and work hard. And maybe you're not doing this now, but maybe you will in the future. And maybe that's like something you should think about because you have that stamina and love of the game. It gets easier as you, as you go. Um, and you, you actually gain energy from working harder. I'm just saying, like, I feel like you know that as well, though. There's something about you. You seem to pick up steam. Again, you, you yeah, something about you picking up steam. I think also if people hear you rant or people hear you um, get really invested in something or they happen to hear you fight with your um, significant other, they have to hear you get in a fight with your parent, they love it. Because there's something about you riling yourself up or getting in a political rant or or like you rile yourself up. And this is actually appealing about you because you seem like you're, you have a steam engine kind of quality where it's like, you know, like I really feel that with you. Um, yeah, you provide energy to people. You should know that. I hope you know that. Um, you're like solar power here. I'm seeking revenge. You, yeah, you really light a fire under people's asses, I gotta say, pop two. Like, that's a big part of what is so appealing about you is if you're, if you're, it doesn't matter if it's an enemy or a friend, you're gonna light a fire under their ass. So I feel like people actually gain a lot by even being your enemy. They learn a lot. They do more than they were gonna. I feel like that's what it comes down to is you're always doing a lot, pal two. And if that is mentally physically changing, um, you know, your mood board's always growing, your house is always getting rearranged. There's something about you that never gets stale and you make sure it's never stale. You're always trying to achieve the next best thing. And so people around you, love it or hate it, they feel the pressure and they ac accomplish more in this life because you were in proximity to them. So remember that. Put yourself into positions where you can respect the people around you because then they will respect you more. If you put yourself into low effort situations, everyone there is going to hate you and you need to realize that because what's appealing about you is that you're not low effort. You never are low effort. You know, even when you think you're achieving less than you could or whatever, everyone else sees you as this high achiever. So put yourself into a pool where that's going to be appreciated. Okay. Because, and if you are in a pool where that's appreciated, that's what's appealing about you, is that you you push everybody forward. And you have a hardness about you. Like, you're very on top of it and um, sharp, quick-witted. Um, you have a serious quality. I could see you riding your bike to work or something like that where... You make every moment of the day count. You're going to squeeze every ounce out of each experience. Highly recommend. But I feel that from you. I feel like you're going to squeeze every ounce you can out of each person. Every molecule of potential. Oh, it's reminding me of Tina Fey and Mean Girls. I'm a pusher, Katie. I'm a pu I push people. <laughs> That's you. That's you. And you can see in that scenario, if you've seen Mean Girls, how that can lead you into trouble. Sure. But it's what's appealing about you. It's what's great about you. So if people are not responding well to your pressure, if people don't want to be pushed, leave them in the dust, go find someone else to push, but don't stop pushing. Don't stop. I don't think you could, but um, don't feel bad about it. I fucked up. You show people where they're lacking and you feel like, it's almost like it's not because you're not being overly critical of yourself. I don't feel like you're being overly critical of yourself, but the fact that you notice your own flaws and you're not afraid to apologize when it was you in the wrong, that also serves this whole idea of you're constantly improving yourself. The fact that you're not afraid of apologizing, that is in itself a way that you choose to push forward. So again, you also reframe people's ideas of what pushing forward is, what hard work means, you know, what what a good life is basically what's exciting what do i need to keep also you're really good at shedding pieces of your personality you know last year you were really into crocheting but you don't feel bad about not doing it this year you know um you were a huge reader as a kid but you don't kick yourself about not reading as much now you know that that helped set you up for your new hobby which is comic books you know like there's something about that where you don't feel bad about old phases because 
that's a part of your process is to shed and reform. And, and you know, you can always pick up reading again. And I feel like you know that. And so you put that in your own life and you put that in other people's lives. But with the apologies thing, it's like, you have this kind of no nonsense approach about a lot of things. And that includes when you're wrong. Of course, I'm going to be wrong sometimes. So why would I feel shame about it? Why do I need to beat myself up? No reason to even if I even if I decry my past actions, there's no reason to feel shame. What really needs to happen is for me to do better and for me to burn it all down and restart. You know, like you have that energy. Okay. Don't ask me. Yeah, there's some people that I feel like another thing that's appealing about you is kind of the way you treat your enemies also. So let's get a card about that. What do you mean by that? Um, the way Patsu treats their enemies. King of Swords. <laughs> wow. You're not afraid of a plot. Um, I feel like you get into it with your enemies. Like you would have that impassioned debate with somebody and try to really change their mind not about you, but about something, about their own lives, about what they're doing, you know? Like, I feel like you're very much a practical person in the way you speak. You're straight no chaser. You know, I'm really getting, you're like a shot of tequila. You really fire people up. And so maybe that's firing them up to be mad at you. Um, but it changes them nonetheless, you know? So this fiery en energy is very appealing to you, even, okay, so it's appealing to you as well. I feel like you, again, you're not afraid of criticism back. You like when people get in the ring with you. I feel like that's why we're talking about the enemies thing. Another thing that's appealing about you is you're not afraid of a fight. You kind of like it. You kind of light up in those scenarios. You, you view it as another way to push yourself. Um, you like to get the pressure too, because that's the Rico Nasty one. Pressure, it's like, pressure licious by Megan the Stallion is like your pressure on other people. Pressure by Rico Nasty is people pressure you too, but you handle it well and you turn it into something that works for you. Um, so yeah, with King of Swords here for how you treat your enemies, you will fight them, you know, verbally. Like you will come against their ideas. You, you provide pushback um, in a way that is, it is directly to the scenario rather than you just hate someone and you're just like hating them for no reason or you avoid them or no, no, no. Like you'll, you'll come against them. You'll come, but it's like straightforward. You're not afraid to speak up. You're not afraid to speak up um, and say why someone has upset you. And so this, they learn from that and it's very appealing about you. I think other people that watch you interact with people who hate you, it's almost like somebody has seen you interact with someone who hated you and it was very appealing because of the way you did things. It was like not mean, but it wasn't backing down either. It's like watching a jousting match. It was exciting. So I feel like something that's appealing about you is you get into these exciting situations. And so people can see that about you. And I think a lot of people have also seen you in these exciting situations where they might have felt shut down. So, okay, you're providing inspiration to people because when it comes to enemies or people who come against them, because instead of being sad that someone dislikes you, you kind of treat it as like a bout, you know, like a fight. Like, okay, you don't like me, let's fight. Let's get into it, you know? Like, and don't physically fight anyone. We can always use our words. Um, you know, people get way more torn down by hearing something they didn't want to hear than they will ever by you slapping across the face. So it's not worth your energy. It's not worth getting in trouble or, you know, getting in trouble with the law. Like, don't leave, don't put your future in your enemy's hands by doing something that they could actually come against you for. Um, just a side note, but I think people have seen the way you interact with people who dislike you and how you take it and what your lesson is from it. And this is very appealing. Your whole point of view about that, of course, it's like it's almost like you have this rose. I feel like your, your appealing nature could be best described by a rose. You have the thorns and it has to be pruned. So you're constantly pruning the rose bush to keep it alive and beautiful. Um, and sometimes you're going to get pricked, but you don't get pissed off about that. You're just like, oh, yeah, you know, 
that's a part of it. And the sharpness of the scissors doesn't, doesn't hurt you. Cutting off a rose or two doesn't hurt you because you know it serves the overall goal. You know it's required. It's necessary. It has to happen that way. You have like this very matter of fact sense about you <laughs> for sure. Okay. Six of swords. Yeah. You know when to walk away and you know when to act. So sometimes you're the king of swords, getting into it, being clear and direct, um, looking your enemy in the eye, not being sad that they don't like you. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so, it's, you don't do that sort of thing. You're not like that. <laughs> like, I feel like that's a big thing that's appealing about you. You're not like that. You're just like, well, you're wrong. Like me or not, I'm still going to do me. I'm brush religious. And then sometimes you will just hide away and you'll just avoid things that don't work for you because you're busy. And the hermit is Virgo too. So heavy on the Virgo placements for you guys. Um, also six health placements. Um, also, you really care about your daily routine. Again, there's something definitely appealing about your daily routine. And I feel like that's going to be different for everyone. Um, if you make something or you have a product, that is also very appealing about you because your product is very excellent. The work you do is very particular as well. So the example I came up with in my mind was, um, you know, if anybody's watching, they have an Oracle deck. Your Oracle deck is the perfect amount of, you know, cards. It is very cleanly done. It is very, um, just gets right to the point. Um, and then the other example, I am a massage therapist. So, so if there's something about your work, which is, has a high standard date standardization. You're always improving it. And it's, of high quality. Again, like you need to put yourself in the ring with a high pressure situation pile too, because that is where you flourish. And so a product line or being an entrepreneur or something like that, you do that so well because you're always improving. You're constantly raising the bar for yourself. And so this is very appealing and people can sense that in the work you put out. They can sense that in the um, services they get from you. Like if somebody is your regular client, you seem to improve your work day, week to week, even if they loved you the first time, they love you even more the second time and it, it stacks. And I feel like also because you get to know people, um, Virgo placements. Now in the past, I have had trouble with Virgo placements because I'm an Aquarius. I also have a Gemini rising and I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> so Virgos don't tend to like that. They kind of, um, also I had had a tendency to be late all the time. And so Virgo, again, not, not something Virgo placements like, however, I have come to love Virgo placements as I've improved my own life uh, because they, they don't hate me so much now that I've got things in order. I don't know why I needed to say that. Maybe that's something with people in your life, pal, too. It's like at first they might, you might rub them the wrong way, but then they get their act together and then they feel like you guys are good. Um, but anyway, I feel like you have this quality of like particularity. Wait, what was I going to say? You improve week to week. Oh, you remember, and it's funny because I didn't remember and that was kind of a hint to me too. You remember things about people from week to week and you change the way you talk to them. You change the way you give advice. You So if you're a therapist, as you're getting to know your client, you're giving better advice each time. It makes sense, but like that's what I'm seeing is like as you get to know your clients, even if these are just the people in your life, your friends, um, you cater to them. You You really know how to cater to people. That's so funny. Interesting. Okay, tell me more. What is appealing about pile number two? Oh, six of cups. And each one of these is a peace lily. So even though I think you have maybe a resting bitch face, pal too. And what's appealing about you is even though you have this resting bitch face, you are very peaceful and focused on and self-focused so you're not looking for you're not spoiling for a fight you you know how to stand up for yourself but you're not spoiling for a fight you're mostly focused on your own stuff and you do remember things people say that's another thing that's really appealing about you is even with this whole harshness that you've got this aura of of intensity and alive awake you know kind of vibe um sharp-eyed kind of vibe 
you also have a sweetness where you're very um, nostalgic or you might be an excellent gift giver. That's another thing that's very appealing about you is like you give someone a gift and they're like, oh my gosh, you were really listening. You were really listening. You were listening very intently. I feel like that's something that's super appealing about you. Yeah, they do have a quality pile too where people might initially find you to be a loner or someone who's reclusive, but then they're... They're, they learn that that's a mistake. It's not the truth. It's just, you know, yeah, I think you need to improve your whole view of this part of your personality, I think, because there's a sense that you think that you're hard to get along with. And I think maybe that's why I, can't, I, I mentioned the whole, I didn't used to get along with Virgos or whatever. When people don't get along with you, it has nothing to do with your personality. Your personality is great, Paltsu. It really does it. It just has to do with you know, you wakened up some sort of insecurity of theirs and that's your job and that's your role. And you are very mentally strong. So remember that with these things too. Like don't take it too hard. You are very good in bed. <laughs> I know that seems out of left field, but um, mm -hmm. again, improving week to week so, sort of thing. That's so funny. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you really cater to people. You really know what they want. Um, you have a sixth sense about it. You have a vision of how things are supposed to be. You have a vision of how you want the world to be. And you're constantly achieving to get there. Also, your jewelry is very cool. Three of Pentacles. The way you work with others is very appealing and high priestess. Yeah, you seem to, that's what I was kind of tapping into. Like you have this sixth sense. Like you just seem to know what's needed. You know what their insecurity is. You know what they need to work on. You see immediately the flaw in someone's artwork. You see that immediately the flaw that's like the, you know, um, the, like the stick in the spokes. And <laughs> so that's like a phrase that is like, if you stick a stick in, in a bike spoke, uh, bike wheels spoke. Um, they can't drive the bike. So in the same way, you you take that stick out of the bike wheel so they can suddenly move. And it was just a small thing, but you clocked it immediately. You take the thorn out of someone's paw. You know, like lots of um, metaphors you could use. But basically, you are so particular and detail-oriented that you immediately pluck out the thing that was driving them crazy. It's also reminding me of that scene in Spirited Away. And also, you remind me of Shihiro from Spirited Away. If you have not seen that movie, you absolutely need to go watch that. It's on HBO. Go watch that. Um, and also you can illegally download it probably somewhere. But you remind me of her because there's this moment where she's in the spa. She um, has a very difficult client that was just shoved onto her and <laughs> given to her because of just random circumstances. But she's the one who takes the time to actually solve something that seemed unsolvable. So yeah, watch that movie because I think there's more messages in there for you. Um, you know, and she also in that movie discovers the name of someone and this solves them. So if there's something about you calling things out or you noticing something or you, you connecting to your own experience to show someone exactly what they're missing. And even if they hate you, they have learned something that's changed them forever. Ten of Pentacles. You are going to have a lot of success in this lifetime, pal, too, and that's very appealing about you as well. Everyone can see that um, just because you are an achiever, point blank period. So if you're putting a cap on what you can achieve, quit that right this very second um, because you can achieve a lot. We just got the Ten of Pentacles, which is clarified by the Six of Cups. Like um, having you on a team is like literally hitting the jackpot so you need to know that about yourself so um keep transforming keep changing I know you would anyway but yeah let's pull some music videos down off that was really fun okay hard working yeah I like this too for you I think this is a, sh a very short music video very aesthetic and again, you have a shortness, a quickness to you. Um, but it's like 
very particular. Lil Yachty always has like very interesting music videos. He has a very distinct um, perspective. I feel like that's with you too. And you only show what needs to be shown. That's what they say you're supposed to do in movies too, is like only show what needs to be shown. Only, you know, think of things in a scene kind of way where every little piece of the scene matters. And you're really good at that. Um, so start noticing those positive things about yourself. Cause I think you're really good at clocking into the weaknesses, what needs to change, start also clocking into what works because I think you have that eye that could do that. So start looking for what is working about this. Um, and if you already do that, I feel like that's something that is appealing about you as well. I actually feel like you have a Justin Bieber quality in a way. Like you have something special about you that could appeal to a lot of different types of people because of your perspective and how people feel around you, which is pressed to accomplish something. Oh, and didn't we just say like improvement? <laughs> you know, getting to the bottom of a uh, problem, so to speak. Yeah, I think you have an intensity about you. You really do. You're very particular and you might, um, you might look over your memories a lot and dissect things and dissect your history, dissect people, dissect things in your mind. Um, and this is very appealing because you see things no one else does and you feel things in ways no one else does. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all that. I like this too for you though because she hits this this is a dance video and she hits every move so freaking well and other people and and it's like a one take so i think there's something real big for you in this music video it's like it's a one take and she's there doing the dance the whole time and you your eyes really lock in on her but then other people also like come in and out of the frame and everything and they're also on point when they're in the frame with her so there's something about your presence that is appealing because it makes everyone shape up, it puts everyone on their toes and, and makes them work in a very particular way. Okay, so that's what I have for you, Pal 2. Thank you so much for joining me. Definitely go check out um, the Scorpion Tarot's video. I'm going to link it down below. It's going to see what makes you attractive. So definitely going to be exciting. I'll be in the comments over there. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time. Pile number three, my bodyguards. Bodyguard. Body yaddy yaddy. What is appealing about pile number three? Your strength, your physical strength, your physicality in general. Also, the memories people have with you are very, very appealing because I feel like memories with you stick in people's minds a lot stronger than with other people. Yeah, you definitely leave your mark. You definitely leave your mark on everybody. I have met people at the bar who I never saw again, but I still remember. And you definitely have that quality. I think it's also because you stand up for people and they don't forget that. They don't forget how you took their side. They don't forget how you stood up for people even behind their back. Or you didn't, you didn't tell somebody's secrets even after you had a falling out, which is something you should never do. Just forget you know, like, I mean, you don't have to forget, you know, but like, maintain your morals, okay? You know, because even if, even if you're on the fence about believing that, you know, God can see everything, you don't even have to think that to know that it matters what you do behind closed doors. You know, I always think of those posters when I was in middle school that was like, your character is what you do when no one is watching. And that's true in religion and that's also true not in religion. It doesn't have to be this thing where you think God is watching you on the toilet. <laughs> you know, that's not what we're saying. Um, it's more like, if you wanna think of it metaphorically, everything you do in the dark comes to light through your actions and it's like an energetic code latched onto you. So there are times when empathetic people, they meet people and they can read something weird on them 
But no, they don't know exactly what it is. You know what I mean? But it's the same thing with good people. It's like people don't know exactly what it is, but they can tell with you, you're not doing anything bad behind closed doors. And of course, like we can all be wrong about those things and believe victims and that's not, I'm not getting into that. I'm saying like, there's something about you, pal too, where you seem like the type to say, no, I'm not gonna just do my job if I think my job is wrong. No, I'm not gonna talk badly about this person even though I know that they've been talking badly about me. No, I'm not going to throw this person under the bus even though I would gain something from it. Um, yeah, you just have a really good, strong moral character. You also don't hate people for hating you. Um, and this is something we can do when we're insecure, right? Is like somebody slightly doesn't like you and you take it so personally that you end up hating that person. There's something about you that doesn't do that. You don't take it so personally. Um, I don't think you focus on it, but you're not like the type to try to convince someone. You will just treat everyone kindly. And that's what gives you like this boss quality, this protector quality is that you would protect someone even if they were your enemy yesterday. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's really something about that with you. Even if someone was really rude to you yesterday, you won't let that change the way you act. You know, and um, that's really good. That's really awesome, pal three. Like, let me, let, give me one second to think about this real quick. You have this like protection around you. It's reminding me of like Bella and Twilight. Like you have a shield around you. And even if people are not thinking about it, again, we keep bringing up the difference between spirituality and reality and the ways in which people who are spiritual are reading you versus the ways in which people who are not spiritual are reading you. So I think this is something that appeals to your spiritual side and the people who are spiritual and appeals to the logical side and the people who are more academic, not that they're totally in competition, but I think you understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, maybe the atheists and the, and the believers here, um, both are, a, feel like you are appealing, um, for different reasons, but really the same reason, which is that you have a protective force. And if this is that you always stand up for the little guy, that's the logical side. And if this is that you kind of have like a shielding ability mentally or spiritually, that's the other side of it. Um, I think it's both. But there's also a stillness to you. It's it's reminding me of like um, like the avatar making that little air bubble. And even if he was surrounded by fire or surrounded by chaos, within that air bubble, the waters are still. I'm getting a lot of visuals from Avatar The Last Airbender, so that's interesting. There are a lot of good metaphors for spirituality in, in shows like that, in Avatar The Last Airbender, in Twilight even, you know, like there are lots of good um, metaphors for how spirituality works and how it feels and also how to be a good person in real life from shows like that. Another good book series that I freaking loved, the first one you have to kind of get through um, because it just has the one character, whereas like later there's a lot more characters that you can relate to, but it's it's called the Cradle series. The first one is Unsold. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent series, like literally amazing. Has tons of good metaphors about how to live, about how to work through issues, about about all sorts of things. I feel like it's a very prophetic book and also really well written again. We're going to the logical side and the spiritual, you know, we're doing that. I think that's a part of what's appealing about you, um, Pile 3. It has to be like, you have like this practicality and also this spirituality and you never let them conflict. You never let them, it's like everything you do, everything I do, I do with a purpose. Um, everything I do, I do it with a passion is the song. But I think also everything you do is with purpose and you never do something that doesn't work spiritually or doesn't work practically and this is something I used to think about so that's I don't know it's interesting um I think whether it's all real or not we need to live in a way that makes sense in both worlds and you have that quality where you're living in both worlds and you make it work and it makes sense okay interesting
yeah, maybe the why, maybe that's why it's coming up this way is like people are actually literally talking about this thing that's appealing about you. Um, they're, they're saying, I really like how sometimes they're spiritual and sometimes they're practical. I like how, um, yeah, I miss you. <laughs> yeah, people love being around you. I think you give a, a much better perspective to a lot of people. I am who I am. Also, you are who you are and you're not easily swayed. Um, so that people, hmm, it's like they feel safer being themselves and working on themselves around you because you're not going to lash out. Like you're not the type to lash out at people. You stay very comfortable. You protect everyone like they're your child in a way. I'm confused. There's definitely something about like a, a protective rock or a shield about you where people feel comfortable showing their soft spots, basically. Like with you, Pal 3, people can be vulnerable without fear. People can be confused around you without fear that you're going to lead them astray. Like there's something about you that says you would never lead someone astray uh, on purpose. Like you would never hurt someone on purpose. You would never, you would always take whatever active step you could to reduce harm. Like I feel like something that's really appealing about you is you are always, you're very into harm reduction. And I feel like that comes in a lot of different places in your life. Um, harm reduction as a political term is like about drug abuse. So I don't know, there could be something in there where people find it very appealing the way you logically talk about things. Um, but then in general, I think you just try to go for least harm and you really plan and strategize based on that concept. What is going to help people the most, hurt people the least? What is the best course of action? What is a good character thing to do? What would my best self do in this moment? And you have that energy 24-7, which gives you this older sister vibe, this older brother vibe, this mentor, leader, protector vibe. Putting my message in me soon. Please don't go. Yeah, people really like having you around, especially when they feel overwhelmed because it's just, yeah, there's something about you that really takes in lost souls, Pile 3. I think you are especially appealing to those who feel unsafe and unprotected, you know? Um, hmm. Never should let you go. People regret losing you. And I feel like you you have a knowledge of this. I think another thing that's appealing about you is you you have a, like um, that sense of the prodigal son returns. Like if somebody apologizes to you, you accept it because you kind of look at everyone like, children that you're protecting. And I think you see yourself as that too. Like it's not condescending. It's more, everyone is just working through their own herds. Everyone's confused. Like I don't take it personally when someone is mean to me because it means something about them and they were probably hurt. If they're being so critical of me, if they're being so mean to me, I can only imagine the kind of stuff that other people have said to them, you know, or done to them. It's probably pretty bad, you know? And um, I don't see you taking this too far to where you're giving too much credit to bad people. I think you you walk that line really well of knowing who to protect and who not to. Um, but anyway, people people who are going through a hard time, they really gravitate towards you. And even people who have wronged you in the past, they regret it. They regret it because it's almost like they inhabit your mindset. Wow, I only did that because blank, blank, blank. You know, Pal 3 was right that I was just lashing out. You know, but it doesn't come across condescending. That's important to say. Like, it's not, oh, you're just, you know, this is just your mommy issue. Like, I, I'm not seeing that from you at all. It's more like, okay, you know, I see that you're confused. I have to step away. Um, but like, no hard feelings. Like, I'm not going to think anything negative of you. Um, and I'm not going to let this blow up. Like you stop, you stop situations in their tracks, pile three. Um, I think that's something that's really appealing about you is you kill beef immediately. Um, <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. That's a huge thing. It's like you kill beef immediately. You're really not about that. You're really not about holding any resentment against people. 
it's like life's too short but also it's it's more than life is too short it's something about your outlook on human beings and what certain actions mean and and so you give people credit yeah okay something else that's appealing about you is you have this hierarchy of what's wrong so yeah yeah it was wrong that lisa um decided to make you her enemy at work and it was wrong that she kind of talked shit behind your back and so you stopped being her friend but you're not going to slash her tires you know like you you have a sense of of uh scale when it comes to bad people like again if there's something about you protecting someone who should have been your enemy and you caring about standing up for the little guy in each specific context. So if someone was really mean to you, or maybe mean in general, but then you see them in a context where they're actually being belittled, you will still stand up for them in that context. Another Ghibli movie, because last pile I was talking about Spirit Away, but this one I'm thinking of Howl's Moving Castle, where the witch of the West um, was the original villain in the story and she did something wrong to the, our main character um, but then she becomes kind of powerless and is being mistreated by others and our main character saves her and takes her along and helps her out and you you have that quality so okay it's very appealing about you because again it, it gives a sense that your character is very strong that you have really good character self-care tend to your garden yeah you tend to yourself you're very you have this almost like internal strength that everyone can read from you um and some people it makes people lash out something about this lashing out thing um is really appealing about you that you you understand where people are coming from maybe you had your bad era you know maybe you were a troublesome kid or you were the class clown and you know where that comes from mentally and you know where that comes so you don't take it personally you're not that teacher that's gonna cry when someone bullies you <laughs> because you're like they're a kid they're lashing out like i'm not gonna take it personally um mm -hmm. Live an uncontrolled life, free to grow anywhere and bound by nothing. You don't like limitations. That's another thing about you um, that is very appealing, Pile 3, is you don't like limitations um, on yourself or others. You impose freedom onto people. What does that mean? You, impo you impose... The angels support this connection. You impose freedom on... You just think everyone deserves good things and everyone deserves to live a good life. And so you would never want to be the thing that hinders someone. And you also hate people who trap others. Again, you, you just have the aura of a protector big time. So let's pull some magician. Okay. You don't wait for someone else to step in. You, you're always the one to take up the mantle or help the person in need. Um, and it's like you know what they need or else you'll go out of your way to try to find that. You go on quests for the other people in your life. Again, if, you, if you're if you a teacher and you have students, I could see this being like you go out of your way to help them with their specific needs. You go out of way to create a lesson plan that works specifically for them. Or if you have clients, you go out of your way, spend your own personal time trying to help them or you give more of your energy than you really had to. Um, you're not afraid of being there while someone cries. You're never annoyed by that. You feel honored that someone would choose you to um, trust and put their put their hopes into and, and um, share their insecurities with. Again, you have this sense of people don't mind showing their weak bits, you know, like when they're around you. And so you know that if somebody is vulnerable with you, but then you guys have a falling out, it makes sense that they would lash out at you because they're afraid that you will use their weakness against them, but you never do. So again, you having this like strong character is, is really appealing. Because again, it catapults, people trust you anyway. People trust you right away because you have that, that Bella shielding thing, which people, they feel it spiritually um, or energetically or whatever logic they want to put behind it, but they feel safe with you. 
Um, and so that's, that's immediate. But then as time goes on, the fact that they feel safe with you increases. They feel safer and safer and safer. And they, they see that their initial perception of you as someone who was a protector, someone who was safe, was right. Someone who could help them, that was right. If somebody ran up to you and was like, can you pretend to be my partner because this guy's following me? You immediately step into that role. So it was right that they chose you to run up to. And then it was also right because you follow through. So use that as a metaphor, but I think also that might happen to you in real life. Five of Swords. And I think because you serve as this protection source for yourself and others, and you know how to protect people, that means you know how to, um, you know how to fight back in lots of different scenarios, let's put it that way. Um, I think that you are no dummy, you're not naive, and that's big. You're really not naive, you're very wise. You have, like, you're very, very wise, and this is super appealing about you, Pal 3. I like the magician here, too, because it, you're not, you also have, like, this self-contained quality. Um, with the self-care and the magician, it's like, you are safe within your own world as well. You've created a very stable foundation for yourself. If this is mentally, if this is physically, I think um, it could be in all realms of your life or you're still working on some of your realms, but I think you give off this energy that is appealing, which is stability, safety, home base. Um, and also that you're working on your own things. It's like I was saying, people, people approach you, people choose you to be someone who protects them, but you're not going around your way. <laughs> you're not going out of your way, running around. Do you need my help? Do you need my help? There's not, you don't have that energy at all. It's more like you're doing your own thing and you step up when necessary. Like, and you're the first person to step up and you always step up and you always follow through. Also, you might have like a gold flint or gold, like, tint to your eyes, which is very appealing. Your eyes are extremely appealing. Oh, oh, wow. So you might have in a very intense colored eye or your eyes are very high contrast to the rest of you. I could see someone with bright blue eyes. I could also see someone with, again, the gold flecks in your eyes. And then I'm also seeing someone with very dark eyes and maybe the rest of you is, is more light, but or maybe the shape of your eyes is really big. There's something about your eyes though, for sure. Something about your eyes. And, and specifically the coloring of your eyes, but then also they're just very encapsulating, enchanting, like it, it adds to that shielding thing. But let me think about it in a logical way. You kind of look like a model. Like you have that quality of, <sighs> You know, people want to approach attractive people. Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You know, like, it's just a, it's a truth universally known. And I think a, everyone can be attractive in their own ways. You do need to capitalize on those ways. But um, I think that everyone can be attractive. So there is something attractive about you um, that makes people want to approach you. Your eyes play a big role in it. But yeah, you have a model quality that makes people feel safe. Let me think about how to explain that, though. Because to me, it's like I had a lot of older cousins who were all extremely beautiful in their own unique ways. And um, so it made me approach them more because it's like there's like a logical reason to approach them, which is that they're cool and hot. And then there's the real reason that you want to feel protected and you want to feel looked over. Also, when someone's attractive, they have more power in their environment. So again, people are drawn to you because of your power as well. So you're very appealing because you have a lot of power. If that's from your looks, if that's from your job, I could see you being in a high power position. Um, if that's, you carry a gun. Like, I don't know, there's something about you that screams, I'm powerful, get behind me. And that's what's appealing about you. I actually feel like maybe this will be the last card. The Hierophant, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's really funny because the, the, um, the Hierophant is like the Pope, you know? And so again, maybe you wear very luxurious clothing. That could also be something that's appealing about you because he has like the gold, gaudy 
clothes. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm pro gaudy. Um, not in the Trump way, but more in the uh, old Catholic church way. Love that. Um, <laughs> nothing like that aesthetic really. Um, but yeah, you have that energy of I'm powerful. I know what I'm doing. I don't even have to say anything. I am known to be a protector. Also the idea of the Pope is like a spiritual guide, um, who everyone respects and has to listen to. And, and you give that, that off as well as a guide or a mentor or a leader that everyone should listen to a father, a mother, like those, those kind of big titles which give you power. So you might literally be people's boss and this is also appealing to them because you you give off that aura of protection. You're very nice to look at. Um, you have a lot of power, both literal and less literal. Um, power is emanating off of you. And again, that reminds me of Twilight because that's Edward sees her right away and, you know, smells the power on her basically, um, essentially. And like, he's, she's the only one that he can't read the mind of. So I think that maybe that's another thing with you. Um, does that make sense here? It's like, you may be the only person that some people can't read and that's also appealing about you. You, you know how to keep a secret, like nobody's business. And it's almost like not even keeping a secret because some people they're keeping a secret and you can tell, um, but there's something about you that you can't tell, like to your grave kind of thing. I would kill for my friends. I would, I would hide a body, you know, you're that friend. Okay, one more. And King of Swords. Yeah, I think also you're very charismatic in the way you speak. One second. You would take control of situations. You enforce pauses. You are say, okay, here's when we take the break. Here's when we, it definitely makes sense if you're a boss, but um, I need a second to think about this. Also, this is something Alice um, of Love Exists Visions, she said in a video before, like, she said that she had to tell her friend that this is a better conversation for a therapist. You have that energy where people don't take it the hard way. They find it appealing about you that you enforce these boundaries and that you say, I can't talk about this right now. I'm actually going through a hard time. I need to go. Or I can't hang out tonight and I'm sorry. I have to go. Like there's something about you enforcing these pauses or enforcing the schedule or um, enforcing, it's enforcing boundaries in a lot of different arenas, that's what I'm feeling is very appealing about you. Um, and you speak up and you're clear. And this I really recommend. If there's anyone who picked this pile, but maybe you aren't so good at expressing your boundaries, here's what I say. Don't hedge, don't say, hey, is it okay if I just skip tonight? Don't say stuff like that. Be more clear, be more king of swords. Um, ah, I can't hang out tonight. Wanna hang out tomorrow? You know, like, be more direct. Don't be so afraid of their response because that's where that kind of um, hemming and hawing comes from is fear of response. So instead of having a fear of response, assume that everyone wants to accommodate your boundaries. Everyone wants to make sure you're comfortable. And so you asserting yourself is a positive in people's eyes. So anyway, some of you are already doing this and this is very appealing about you. You're very straightforward. You're like, okay, I can hang out this day, but I can't hang out this day. I don't really wanna talk about um, the family right now, <laughs> you know, to your sister or something like it. You're like, I can't talk about this. Sorry, you know, <laughs> like there's something about that in your energy. Um, let me think of a more positive example because I'm seeing it very strongly in the boundaries thing, but I think there's another half of it where Oh, here it is. Here it is. I feel like you compliment people in a very dramatic, uh, dramatic and direct way as well. I feel like just the way you enforce boundaries, you also enforce positivity and you look at people with a blunt eye, but positive. You're very effusive when it comes to compliments like you will write someone a love letter and say exactly what you love about them you will write someone a birthday card and the message inside will make them cry you know because you're not afraid of really giving them a true compliment like you're not in competition with people you love to build people up and you see things in a very straightforward way and that includes people's strengths you see their strengths in a very clear and and 
focus kind of way. I think also you tap into people's characters really well and you see it yeah, again something about you seeing people's strengths very well and you not being afraid to say so so yeah that's what I've got for you pile of three um thank you so much for joining me you're sexy when people are standing next to you they just want to inch closer and closer and closer by the way um you might feel that and it's very appealing how they feel like magnetically pulled towards you and again there is a sense about it that's let me get behind the person with the gun let me get behind the shield which is you but there's another sense of it let me get closer to this person oh i'm so warm you know uh-huh okay but yeah so you know you're you're the boundaries king or queen so i'm sure you don't need even any advice when it comes to that but uh okay love you love you pile three um i will see you next time thank you so much make sure to go check out scorpion tarot's video i will link it down below and i'll be in the comments over there see what makes you attractive and i will see you next time oh my gosh no see you know what's so funny about your pile pile three i keep having to go back it's like double back so people might double back with you a lot because maybe when they're in their in your presence, they don't know it's you that's making them feel so built up and so protected. So then when they leave, it becomes more obvious. As much of you as you are willing to give so just keep that in mind um I think again you, you're known for your boundaries and that's great but people will take and take and take I, I mean I'm I'm thinking of the the storybook the children's book the giving tree even if you read that when you were a kid go ahead and read it again go to the bookstore and just flip through it it'll take you like five seconds to read it um that is you so keep that in mind Yes, people will come back to you even after they bled you dry and thank you for the work you've done, but don't let them bleed you completely dry. You know, like everyone wants your energy and your attention. And once you become comfortable with that, you'll also become more comfortable just saying, okay, that's all I can take. Um, you know, or okay, yeah, I'm just too tired to come out tonight. And they might be disappointed, but they'll come right back to you. If you felt more comfortable that people would come back to you, I feel like you'd, you'd feel more comfortable saying no. So yeah, that's what I've got for you, pile number three, and I will see you next time. Thanks for um, sticking around. If you made it all the way through pile three instead of leaving when I told you to leave several times, please leave me a comment, but yeah, thank you. Pile number four, this is my psychic pile. This is my mind reader pile. This is my... Um, knows exactly what I'm thinking without me having to say. You probably attract a lot of introverts because they don't have to say too much for you to understand what they're thinking. Um, yeah, you might even work with underserved populations. Like I could, okay, so somebody in this pile works with like autistic people and you're so good at interacting with um, your autistic clients or the, the autistic people in your life. Um, because you are good at reading them and understanding what they need and talking to them in, in a very um, clear way. Pile number four. What makes pile number four? Yeah. What makes pile number four? I keep wanting to say attractive. That's actually going to be Scorpio scorpion um tarot's video so that's in the link down below but i feel like you are very attractive and you know babies love attractive people <laughs> like um it's something people people are drawn to even even people who aren't attracted to you you know like it's not it doesn't have to be sexual for people to find you attractive 
but it can be. Be very helpful. Very, very helpful. You could also be very athletic, a very good dancer, or a very, um, yeah, athletic in some way. If this is dancing, I'm seeing like pole dancing. Somebody's a pole dancer here. You, that makes you very appealing. You're very good at it. Um, just the way you move is excellent. Um, but it's also like, also other kinds of dancing, dancing in a club or just dancing around your house or dancing at work or something. Interesting. You have a fun energy about you that people really gravitate towards, but especially animals and people who are like marginalized in some way. They know you're safe. So maybe you have like tattoos and piercings and so people find that appealing because they find it appealing because you're hot, but they also find it appealing because it means, oh, thank God, there's a, like a normal person. I just saw a tweet the other day that was like, um, when somebody in, with tattoos and piercing comes in and you're like, oh my gosh, thank goodness there's a normal person in here. That's the kind of energy I'm getting from you is like people immediately know they're protected by you. So maybe you're outspoken about your political beliefs or outspoken about being um, feminist or anti-racist or uh, anti-fascist or something. And so people feel safe with you and it's appealing that you are so open with these kind of things too and that you you lead with that. Um, huge on you being a safe individual. Huge on you being a safe individual. So we're gonna put that part aside because I, I think that's a huge piece of what makes you appealing. And then there's all these other reasons that are making you appealing that make people feel like you are safe, but I think it comes down to feeling like you are a safe individual. I think, okay, like I said, we're gonna put that part aside because there's also this part of you that is very fun, creative, colorful, fresh, exciting, um, just just bubbles and happiness and sparklies. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm getting, sprinkles on your ice cream kind of vibe here. Um, yeah, drunk face is perfect. Oh, I like flowers too, I can buy myself flowers. Okay, that's enough music videos though. And I think you have a sing-song quality to you. <laughs> like you really do. And we got Tinkerbell over here. I'm, I'm like, I'm getting that that vibe. Like everywhere you go, a trail of glitter follows, you know? And, um, or if you're a man and you don't wanna say glitter follows you, maybe it's like a trail of stardust. Um, you know, sunshine is following you everywhere you go. I think it'll be different for all of you. Um, but there's something exciting about you exciting and yet safe but yeah like i said putting that aside i think we get the point there um people feel safe around you like babies and and dogs because they're they're reading how safe you are there's something there's something about that like they just can feel it you know how an animal can just feel it i could see zoo animals looking at you in the eye you know i could see you being that person who goes on a hike and sees way more animals than anybody else. It's almost like you're you all the time, Pile 4, so you might not realize how powerful your energy is. You are a unicorn in a people world. Um, yeah, that's what I'm getting, okay? Yeah, you really hold the light for people. You keep the light on, keeping the porch light on. I could see you swinging on a porch um, a, a front porch swing with the light on, inviting your neighbors over. Yeah, your aesthetics are a big part of what is appealing about you for sure. You are vibey as hell, Pile 4. Vibey as hell. And just like if you saw someone wearing Tinkerbell's outfit, you'd be like, oh, you're dressed up as Tinkerbell. There's something about that with you. It's like when people around you are influenced by you, everyone can tell. Everyone notices it. They're like, oh, I bet they got that from Pile 4, or I bet they were inspired by Pile 4. Um, just because of how specific you are. I have this little, I don't know if you can see it. It's this little sachet of lavender I got in Croatia. Maybe you love to travel. That's an, That could be another thing that is um, appealing about you, that you're always down to learn. You're definitely very accepting of other cultures, um, which we've already kind of gotten into with the safety thing. 
but you're you're not afraid of spicing things up like adding a little lace to something you yeah okay you could make your own clothes or something pal for or you could um hand make letters to people or hand make birthday cards or there's something handmade about you like about your style or your art or yeah you you might be a diy queen you could be thrifty you could care about um like well you could care about the environment that's something with you but I, I was gonna say, um, you care about your environment. You care about surrounding yourself with beauty or decking yourself out beautifully, you know? You could be someone with a lot of tattoos, in which case those are appealing, but you don't have to have tattoos. Also seeing your hair is very, very appealing. Maybe you dye your hair, or maybe you style it in an interesting way that's very, oh, that's pile four, that's pile four style, you know? So people really notice when you, when other people are inspired by you. I would Google what the meaning of lavender is or like what the symbolism of lavender is because I feel like that's part of your, um, your aesthetic, but um, your what makes you appealing is whatever the meaning of lavender is. Also pine trees and you have that kind of fresh, it's like what the sense of lavender and pine, that's not like fresh isn't quite the right word, although it can be, it's more like, I mean, it's nature, but it's like nature in the sunlight. You have a sunshine running through fields of flowers, vibes, running. Also, you, you're very active, energized. You could be very, you have, okay. So you could have a very athletic body. Um, and yeah, interesting. Why are you saying that? Because so, you're always down. You're always down to go on the hike. You're never lazy. Like, that doesn't seem like something you would do. Um, or maybe you, like, literally can't sit still and you're, like, very active. Um, always down. You're always down for an adventure. You're very adventurous. Again, we did talk about traveling. You'd go on the bike ride. You don't have any limitations. Um, and even if you literally have limitations, it, it just, you're... What makes you appealing is you seem to have no limitations. Like you could achieve anything you wanted. You could do anything you wanted. You could go anywhere you wanted, get in the door anywhere. You have this quality where you could probably get someone back backstage. If, if you really put your energy there, you could get someone backstage. Okay. There's no one like you. I feel like that's something else that's very appealing. There's literally no one like you. Pages, cups. Yeah, uh, your creativity and um, what you offer is completely new. Hmm. You have a, a vibe of dancing in the rain, too. You're very alive, very awake. The hangman. You, you definitely look at things very differently than other people. Okay, two of swords again. Eight of pentacles. It's almost like working hard without knowing the outcome. Building yourself up for no reason. It's like you don't need a reason to live. You're just living and you do it well. Like you're not aimless because that implies stagnancy. Whereas here, I'm seeing you go in whatever direction, but it's almost like it's not planned. It's not a planned direction. So um, what, sorry, what, what is appealing? Also people just like forget what they were thinking about and they wanna, they feel like scattered in your energy, but it's appealing because maybe, maybe you really attract, okay, so you also could really at attract very, very logical types. Um, or very strict type personalities because you're so free, but it's working really well and you're very accomplished. So it, it, it inspires them to be more free. Again, this makes sense if you have like a lot of autistic friends or you teach autistic people. Um, a lot of the autistic, they're all men that I know. Um, they, they think in very like logical, straightforward ways. So then they get like inspired and feel like something different when they talk to a person who's more um, adventurous and carefree and not so fearful. 
Okay. But even like, it doesn't have to be autistic people. It can also just be people who think like that, people who are accountants, people who are, um, you know, conservative thinkers, or y you open people's minds um, because you're so fun. You're like, a, you're like, okay, strawberry milk. Anybody drink strawberry milk or you have a strawberry? Maybe you always get the pink drink at Starbucks. I don't know. But um, there's something pink about your energy in that it's different, it stands out, and it's fun and cute. Okay? Cinema roll from Sanrio. Okay. You could be a Hello Kitty girl. It doesn't have to be, but just for somebody out there. Take what resonates. Um, okay. Uh, what is appealing about power four? Again, you do make people really forget what they were thinking about. Like, that's for sure. Because I keep getting that in your energy. One is Aries. That makes sense. I could see you having heavy Aries placements, maybe multiple Aries placements. Um, again, take what resonates. 11 is Aquarius and five is Leo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two fire signs, one air. And that is really you. Like, you are a firecracker. Firework over here. Baby, you're a firework. Lots of music in your energy. I feel like being around you was like a music kind of moment. Knight of Pentacles. This is the kind of people that are very, very um, into you. Or they find you very appealing. People who are trapped like this. People who are slow to act find you extremely appealing because you're definitely not so slow to act. Like, you don't need to think about every single detail to know that this is a good idea. Um, okay. You don't have to be working out for a bodybuilding competition to try to get in shape. You don't have to um, want to be a lawyer to go to law school. You don't have to um, have an end goal in mind in order to do something. Like, I always bring up pottery class as an example, because I went to a really fun one a couple years ago. Um, so it's something that pops in my mind. But you could take a pottery class with no intention of becoming a, you know, a ceramic artist. It's more for the experience. It's more for what you learn. And you know that anything you learn can be applicable to lots of situations. It doesn't have to have a logical end to its use. It's like, you, you know how to follow your intuition. You also have like something of a canary in a coal mine vibe to you that's very appealing because everything you say ends up being right or you end up avoiding trouble just by following your intuition. And again, for the logical people out there, um, that's why we have an intuition is so we can be our own canaries in the coal mine. And when we start to feel bad, we don't need to analyze every reason why we might be wrong about feeling bad. We just need to get out of that situation. And so it's very appealing that you're like that. The chariot, yes, <laughs> movement in the face of not knowing. That's a huge part of what's making, making you appealing, pal, for is movement in the face of not knowing the outcome. And then we got eight of cups, eight of pentacles. So you have a lot of, you hold a lot of power by not being tied to anything. You had, you're definitely a free bird. Lots of bird stuff in your energy too. Fun fact, my first word was bird. Um, but yeah, you have like a bird quality to you. Um, so maybe you also kind of have that bird face, uh, facial features as well. Um, some of my favorite people have that kind of like bird look to them. And uh, yeah, so you might have that and that's very appealing about you. Your hair, your if you have long hair, long dark hair is here very much with a, like a wave to it. So, wow, that could be very appealing about you. But even if your hair is different, I think your hair is really, very appealing. The fire in your eyes is very appealing. People can't read your mind. They just know you're feeling intensely. You have a kinetic energy around you, Pal Four, that's very intense. And I think when you're around, you know, babies and animals, it's intense in a loving way. But then other times when you're accomplishing something or you're working out, it's intense in that way. Or you're on a long hike or you're, you're doing something physically active with somebody. It's like the look in your eyes changes and it's very appealing. Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords, and to clarify, the Knight of Pentacles. Again, no fear of starting fresh. No fear of sunk cost fallacy like you don't live like that and it's very appealing because it also works out for you so the practical people can appreciate it yeah 
You know what else is appealing about you, Pal4? Is like you prefer to work alone, but you work with people excellently. Um, and so sometimes people can meet kind of loners or independent types and they think that they're not going to be friendly but they end up being extremely friendly um and I feel like that's with you it's like you seem like a loner but then you end up being extremely friendly and helpful and, and willing to work with others knight of swords I think you definitely are prophetic with the way you talk and it might not always be on purpose. Um, and if, if this is not something you know about yourself, you should look into it and develop that more within yourself. It's like believing these nudges that you get or um, there's something, there's this book called The Artist's Way. It's a very famous book, which um, provides lots of advice for how to live like an artist. Um, one of the things that they suggest is, um, it's like morning pages where you sit and you write free form like you just brain dump every morning like three pages of writing that could be a great practice for you because you have this skill and that will develop it in a more helpful way as well if you find that sometimes your thoughts can go a little negative no one sees this about you by the way if you if you find yourself to be kind of mentally depressed or you you kind of get dark in your mind nobody is seeing this about you but if you want to work through that in a more real way the morning pages is a good idea You have like a real magical quality about you, Pal 4. Like every time you're sad, it starts to rain. Like every time you're angry, the wind is whipping around. Um, like you could play that game. You know those people on the street that hide the cup or whatever? Hide a little marble under a cup and you have to pick. Even if you weren't watching, you could pick the right one. So those are all like kind of spiritual gifts. Um, or just like a very, very, very strong intuition or connection with the world or like earth witch kind of vibe from you. I think you either already do connect with nature a lot or you should and you have a connection to nature. I, I'm, I'm watching that Agatha All Along show, which is really good. I love it, by the way. Um, it's so fun. But there's an earth witch and that's the kind of vibe I get from you. Like you do have an earth witch vibe to you. And just like the ocean is powerful you have that kind of power too power loving growing scary you know you have all those different sides to you just like nature does okay so i think you you have a lot of things that are appealing about you that are cultivating i think there's that first half of the reading was what is already apparent what is already appealing to you people love to talk to you like talking to you is like a cinnamon roll like it feels amazing it's a sweetness there's something that makes people feel special and alive and great here's another part of you that is appealing but maybe you're in the process of cultivating you have a gravitational pull like a planet you know like you have a bigness to your energy that is more natural or cosmic that I think you could explore more. Or maybe you have explored it and it's, it's something that's appealing. Um, but for those of you who haven't really explored this part of yourself, um, start to notice those things. Like you're around yourself all the time, so maybe you don't notice these things as much. Um, but maybe you should start to realize that when you saw that moose in the forest, no one else would have seen it. Like there's something special for you. Start looking up the signs. Like if you see an animal, Type in to Google animal significance, you know, the name of the animal significance. If you start to, if you see a flower and you're like, I just saw that kind of flower the other day, look up the symbolism. I think doing more of that kind of things or even, okay, so start bird watching. That's another way to connect with nature. That's, I think it's going to give you power um, is to have more knowledge of the natural world to, to be able to recognize plants or recognize birds or know the symbolism of those things or just literally know about them in general. Um, I think that that will be something that's really cool for you. Ten of Cups. Yeah, I think that'll provide a lot of emotional fulfillment because there's part of you that's very appealing that is this exciting, looking for excitement piece of you. So people can read that you're looking for excitement. Um, but I feel like you could feel more 
contained within yourself and happy with your solitude if you connected more with nature. Think of nature as your friend who you can talk to. Um, like have a favorite tree that you go out every day and you hang out near and just talk out loud to. Um, you'd be surprised at how, how much that's going to cultivate your aura. Yeah, a thousand aura points to pile for. Um, <laughs> hang out under the moonlight. Know that you're not trapped. There's more to you than you think. And people can read this off of you. They're, they're appealed. They find you appealing because they read all of these things on you. It's just that you're around yourself all the time, so you don't notice. <coughs> mm. Yeah, I just feel like you have some throat blockages. So go into nature. If this is your local park, if this is the forest, if this is a walk around your neighborhood, talk out loud. Put your headphones in. People will think you're on the phone. Talk through things. Get used to speaking it out loud. Say it out loud. You might like how it feels. That's like Kanye West lyric. Um, but yeah, sometimes you don't know what you think until you can say it out loud. So use nature. Use the local tree that you love. Um, they want to help you. You know, nature wants to love you. Like, nature loves people. We're, we're part of nature. Um, I don't know why I needed to go on that rant. Um, but you have a connection to nature in a way that I don't, that other people read on you and they find appealing, but that you don't see in yourself, or some of you might, but for those of you who don't, um, you really do have that connection to nature and you could develop it more. Maybe get a tattoo, uh, like not me encouraging people to get tattoos, but get, get a tattoo of something natural. Get your favorite flower, get, um, you know, something. Get that butterfly tattoo. I don't give a fuck. Butterfly tattoos are popular for a reason because they're a great tattoo. Um, you know, and look up the symbolism of specific butterflies or something like that. Get a moon tattoo. Find your connection to the moon every night. Go outside and talk to the moon. Talk to the sun. Um, this is something that's really excellent to do. And it's something that a lot of religions and spiritualities and philosophies have encouraged, which is to talk to your environment. Um, you know, the world is sentient you can speak with it. Okay, well, you got to say what you got to say. So, um, yeah, with purple, you have a royalty that is waiting for you to take up the mantle. There's more to life than what you've seen so far. Like a lot more. And it can be even more fun than what you've experienced before. So, all right, go check out um, the Scorpion Tarot's video. Um, I'm going to leave it down below. It's all about what makes you attractive, a little bit of lighter. <laughs> I got into a little bit of advice territory with you here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me, Pal4. It was wonderful being in your energy. Um, go outside during the rain. Don't give yourself, you know, hypothermia or something, but connect with nature some because I, I feel it. Um, so yeah, love you. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye.